In this video, I'll show you how I paint Cobalt Warriors. Hi everyone and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. By this time I'm going to take you through the steps I took for painting this cool little Cobalt Warrior from Steamforged Games. If you're not familiar with them then I've added a link in the description below to their website which is well worth checking out because they make some pretty cool games. As always before we start I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you who have subscribed to this channel so far. I really really do appreciate your support. If this is your first time watching this channel then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. Okay then so let's make a start on some painting. One thing you'll notice is that these miniatures come already attached to the base. So what I've done is I've just added a few extra little details on this one. So I've added some sand, uh, a little skull here and some rocks, and then I've primed it ready for painting. If you'd like to know more details on how I prime and prepare my models for painting, then please click this link above. Okay, so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to add the base color for all of the skin. And for this, I'm going to use Iron Rack Skin from GW. So the main thing here really is to make sure that you get your base paints on nice and smooth. And to do that, you want to add a touch of water to the paint. This will, of course, make it a little bit thinner. So you may find in order to get a solid color, you need to add more than one coat. Obviously you don't need to be too neat at this stage because any details that you paint over we can paint later, but do make sure that you get the paint into all of these deep creases and crevices. So to get a solid color on the skin, I've applied two coats and now the next step is painting in all of the horn and scale details with some storm vermin fur from Games Workshop. Just like I did before, I've added a touch of water to help the paint go on nice and smooth. This time though, I'm trying to be as careful and neat as possible when painting in these details. If you do make any mistakes so just let it dry and then go back and neaten things up again with some of the skin colour. For the next step I'm going to paint in all of the wooden details. This is the shield and the spear handle and for this I'm going to use Mornfang Brown from Games Workshop. Next, I'm just going to pick out the detail of this strapping on the spear, and for this, I'm going to use some Bane Blade Brown from Games Workshop. Do try and be as neat as possible, but don't worry if you do make any mistakes, then just neaten things back up again with whichever color you've painted over. Now I'm going to paint in all of the metal details on the model. This is the spearhead, the spikes on his tail, the metal strips on the shield. And for this, I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel from Games Workshop. Okay then, with those base colors now painted in, I'm gonna add some extra shade and shadow. And for this, I'm going to apply a wash all over the skin, the metal, and the uh, gray horns and scales. And for this, I'm gonna use Null Oil from Games Workshop. What you're looking to do here is to apply the shade evenly across all of the model. And then using your brush, just persuade it so that it settles into all those deepest recesses and creases. Once you've applied your wash, it's really important that you let it dry fully before moving on to the next stage. This can usually take between 20 and 30 minutes. 
With that wash now fully dry, I'm going to apply a wash just to all of the wooden areas. And for this, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. Okay, so just like before, I'm applying it evenly across all of the surface and I'm encouraging it to settle into all of those details and creases. And I'm going to give it a good 30 minutes to dry before moving on to the next stage. Now that we've added those shades, it's really added a lot of depth and shadow to the model, but it has made it very dark. So now I'm going to brighten up that flesh tone again by adding a layer of iron rack skin. So what you're looking to do here is paint in all of the raised areas of the model and leaving the darker shaded areas untouched. When it comes to flatter parts, such as this shoulder and the muscles of the arm, you're looking to concentrate the paint to the top where the light would catch most. But again, you're leaving the deeper shaded areas of the recesses. As a finishing step now to the skin tone, I'm just going to apply a thin down wash all over. This will soften down and add some transition between the layering we've just done. And for this, I'm going to use two parts Lamia Medium, one part Null Oil. You can afford to be quite generous when applying this all over the skin tone because it's a very soft wash, but it will take longer to dry. So give it a good 30 to 40 minutes. Next, I'm going to add some highlights now to the horns and the scales, and for this I'm going to use Dawnstone from Games Workshop. So what you're looking to do here is pick out all of the highest edges of the horns and each of the scales, and this will bring some real definition and clarity to those shapes and make them really stand out. Okay, so next I want to paint the eyes in as a really piercing, bright, icy blue. And for this, I'm going to start off by base coating each of the eyes with some Althorn Grey from Games Workshop. So this is probably going to be the most delicate, fiddly part of painting this model. But just take your time and try and be as neat and careful as you can. And now to give each of the eyes a nice blue tint, I'm going to apply a thin down glaze of Calf Blue with a ratio of three parts Lamia Medium to one part Calf Blue. Unlike with the washes previously, I'm not looking for a heavy application here. It's just enough to wet the surface because then that will tint the eyes to a lovely blue color. Next, I'm going to apply a really quick and simple rusting effect to all of the metal details. And for this, I'm going to use Troll Slayer Orange from GW. What you want to do is you want to thin down your paint so it has the consistency of a glaze or a wash. And then with a small amount on your brush, just dab it randomly onto the surface so that it gives a tint and the effect of rusting. And then as one finishing touch to all the metal details, I'm just going to add a final edge highlight using some iron hand steel. All I'm looking to do is pick out any of the sharpest edges or areas of the blade where it would be sharpened and rust free.
All that remains to be done now is to paint in the base, starting off with a base coat to all of the gravel and rocks with some Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. I've added a touch of water to the paint to help it flow really nice and smooth and you just need to be very careful when painting around some of the details such as the tail to make sure that you don't get any paint on there. Now to help bring out some of the texture on that base I'm going to do a light dry brush of Administratum Grey from Games Workshop. Dry brushing, you want to remove the majority of paint first onto some tissue paper so that there's very little left in the bristles and then you just lightly flick the surface of the model with your bristles so that it just catches the very tops. To finish off the rocks I'm just going to apply a very quick wash now of some null oil all over. Moving on now to painting in this skull and I'm going to start off by base coating it with some Screaming Skull from Games Workshop. And now I'll apply a wash all over the skull with some Agrax Earthshade. All you need to do now is paint in the base rim the colour of your choice. Uh, in this particular case I chose black and your Cobalt Warrior is done. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then please do give it a like and maybe drop a comment below. For a complete listing of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial and links of where to get them at discount prices then do check out the description below. If you'd like to see more of these videos then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post another video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another tutorial very soon.